What's up, y'all? Tight shirt, Ted Warfield, back in the building. Hope you're having a good day so far. Today, we are back on the Sony a7 IV train. Now, I had the a7 IV on pre-release. If you didn't see all of those videos in that playlist, make sure you check that out. And this, along with future videos, will be added to that playlist, so make sure you stick around. Today, we're gonna set up the a7 IV for filmmaking or video creation, whatever you wanna call it. And I'm gonna show you how my camera is set up. Now, I think it's important to say that this is just how I choose to set my camera up. You can, of course, customize your camera however you friggin' want to. What I hope to do with this video is just to give you some inspiration. Now, let's get right into it. A few things we need to change before we can actually get into setting our camera up the way we want to. Number one, we need to tell our freaking A7 IV not to just be a punk and turn off whenever it gets a little bit warm. So to do this, we're gonna go to setup, then we're gonna go to number nine, power setting option, go over, change auto power off temp. We wanna set that to high. That will stop the camera from turning off every time it gets a little bit freaking warm. Not to say that it can't overheat, but that'll stop it from doing it prematurely. All of these other settings in here, you can change, you know, how soon you want the camera to go into sleep mode and all that stuff. I'm not touching that. I just wanted to touch the auto power off temp. If you're anything like me and you always out running and gunning, a lot of times you need to change lenses. Now, the a7 IV does have that handy dandy feature where you can set the shutter to close when you turn the camera off to protect the sensor when you're out and about. So we're gonna turn that on real quick. Same thing, we're gonna go to setup. We're gonna go to the bottom, setup option, go to anti-dust function, then scroll down to shutter. When power off, you wanna turn that on. Now, some of you may be worried that this may, you know, shorten the life of your shutter. I don't know, but we need to keep that on, right? The next thing I wanna turn on is the red box around the screen whenever you are recorded because the a7 IV does not have any type of tally light on it. So we wanna go up to the shooting menu, then we wanna go over to, where is it? Where is it? Shooting display, and then turn on emphasized rec display. We wanna turn that on. That'll give us a red box around the screen whenever we're recording. The next thing we need to do is separate our video and photo controls. So what I mean by that is let's just say you use it photos, right? And you have your shutter at one five hundredth of a second. If we don't separate it, when you flip the video, then your shutter speed is gonna carry over. And that's fine for some things, but for our exposure stuff, we don't want that stuff carrying over. So to get to that, we're gonna go back to setup. We're gonna go to number three, operation customize, go down to different set for still and movie. You'll get a pop-up. And then we wanna go through here and select the stuff that we don't want to carry over. So I want my aperture to be independent. I want my shutter speed to be independent, my ISO to be independent, and uh, focus mode to also be independent. So once we set those up, I'm cool. Lastly, while I'm in this menu, I wanna go over to record with shutter, and I wanna turn that on. The reason I wanna do that, because a lot of times when you put a cage on here, especially small rig, the record button that is right on the top, sometimes it's tucked underneath the cage and it's annoying to reach your finger back there and bend your finger all up and all that stuff. So I like to be able to record with the shutter button also. Now, let's go ahead and get started. First thing, flip the dial on your camera to the video setting. This is important because in the menu itself, some things will change depending on if you're in photo or video. And since we wanna set this up for video, photo will be a different video. We wanna set this to video first and then we'll set our custom one, two, and three. The first thing I need to do, however, is set my function menu up. Now, if you wanna customize your function menu, which I definitely think you should, you need to go to setup, operation customize, then go down to function menu settings. Now, as you see on the screen, this camera does split it up into photo and video. So I'm gonna show you how my function menu is set up. So if I go back to my home screen, then press function, starting from right to left at the top. I have my face and eye subject as my first option. This will let me toggle between if I wanna go to human, animal, bird, whatever. My next option will be gamma display assist if I'm using S-Log3. My next option will be my focus area so I can cycle through all of my focus areas right from my function menu. Some of you guys will have that set to a custom button. I don't have mine set to a custom button, but set yours up how you want to. The next thing is picture profile. Now, this is a huge one. So all of your S-Log3s, your HLGs, your s Cinetone, which is a favorite of mine, all of those are right here right in the function menu. The next thing is zebra display, toggle that on and off and also toggle the level. If we go down to the bottom row, focus peaking, turning that on and off and also toggling the level. The next thing, face eye priority and AF. This is huge for me because a lot of times when I'm filming stuff, I don't want it looking for faces automatically. So if I specifically don't want it to look for faces or eyes, I'll turn that on and off. The next thing is meter and mode. The last two things are two exclusive features to the a7 IV as of right now. First one, focus map, 
probably saw all of the, the, the cool marketing around that. It is actually a dope feature. And then lastly, is a huge one, variable shutter. If you're ever in a situation where you're shooting, you got bright LEDs or whatever, you're getting flicker in there. If you turn on variable shutter, you can fine tune your shutter speed to get rid of that flicker, which is amazing. I can't wait till Sony updates the rest of their cameras with this feature. Now that we have our function menu set, I wanna show you how my layout is, my buttons, and then we'll go and set our custom modes up, and then that should be pretty much everything we need. So, the first thing I'm gonna do is go to menu, we're gonna to go to operation customize, and then we're gonna to go to the second option, which is custom key dial set. Now, since we're doing video, we need to make sure we're picking the one with the video icon next to it. And I'm just gonna go through my setup again. You can set yours up the way you want to. So, starting at the top, Number one, which is my AEL button. I have this set to autofocus transition speed. Number two, which is actually the AF on button. I changed that to white balance because I love having my white balance right at my fingertips. Monitor brightness is my C1 button. So that's my number three. My number four is actually my autofocus subject shift sensitivity. So I like having those on the corner of the camera because I use autofocus a lot. I like being able to control how fast the shifts happen and also the speed at which that happens. And then number five, which is the trash icon. I left that where it is because you know, trash needs to go in the trash. Moving on to the next page, my joystick, I left that as follow photography because I don't ever change that. The next one is huge for me. My center button on the back in the middle of the scroll wheel, I have that set to my APS-C Super 35 mode. This is clutch for me because when I'm out and about and I need that extra reach, especially with this camera, being able to hit that center button, punch in, hit it again, punch back out, that is freaking huge. I definitely recommend you set yours the same way. Focus magnifier, if you don't know what that is, it's an easy way for you to punch in, check your focus, punch back out. Number four, I have set to my ISO because I like having my ISO right there. It just feels natural. And then number five, because I do toggle between autofocus and manual focus a lot. Number five, which is the bottom of the scroll wheel, I have that set to my autofocus, manual focus toggle. Moving on to the next page, the top. Where the record button is, I left that standard. Number two, steady shot, because I flip a lot between steady shot off if I'm using a gimbal, standard, or active, so I put that right up there because I use it so much. The next thing is the custom button on the lens. I actually never use that button on my lens. You might, but I never use it. And then lastly, the extra wheel that we have now that used to be exposure comp, I actually have this set to be my audio level. And I specifically put it here because there's a lock. I cannot stand when I'm filming something, especially people or myself, and I knock the audio level off by mistake. So to alleviate that, where the exposure comp dial used to be with the lock on, and we changed that to audio levels, and that, to me, my friends, is a huge freaking deal. Now, lastly, now that we have our hard stuff set up our operational stuff set up we need to supercharge this bad baby and get our resolutions and frame rate set up now this is going to be totally up to you on how you set it up this is going to be dependent on the memory cards you have etc again i'm going to show you how mine is set up and then we're going to set custom one for 24 frames a second custom two for 60 frames a second and then custom three for 120 frames per second i do not use slow and quick i'm sorry so if you need more help on that then you need to watch another video let's get right into it so first thing is first it needs to be on the video mode like i said and it needs to be on m for manual so that we can adjust everything and then save it so let's go to menu we're gonna go up to our shooting tab and then we're gonna start with image quality. So for file format, now again, this is gonna depend on how you wanna shoot, the type of media you're shooting on. Because I'm using a V60 card, I'm gonna have to use H.265 and because I'm using a new MacBook Pro, which I got a whole playlist on that too, that thing can rip through 422 10-bit footage. So obviously I wanna use that. So let's go to file format. We're gonna change this to XAVC HS4K, that's the H.265. For movie settings, we're gonna go over 24 frames a second. For record setting, we're gonna go up to 100 megabits per second, 422 10-bit. This will give you the warning on the screen. Hey, make sure your card and computer and all that stuff can support it. Fine, it does. And I'm cool with that. While I'm in this menu, let me go down to lens compensation and turn on breathing compensation because we didn't turn that on before. If you have a lens that can take advantage of this, absolutely wanna make sure that's turned on. So now that we had that stuff set up, the next thing we wanna do is dial in our shutter speed, aperture, etc. So because this is 24 frames a second, we wanna double our frame rate and we wanna go with 
one fiftieth of a second for our aperture you always want to set it to whatever the widest aperture you have or whatever aperture you shoot with the most I always like to start with the widest it can go so for me it's f 2.8 and then my iso i always set that to base 100 we could go up and down from there now as far as picture profile i'm going to go into my function menu and i'm going to use s cinetone because i love me some s cinetone so i'm going to set that to pp11 oh make sure that d row is off we don't want the dynamic range optimization crap on so go into your menu turn that off i know for a fact that i want my stabilization on so i'm going to leave my active mode on white balance i will obviously want to set per situation i don't want that being a specific white balance every time i flip to my number one so i'm pretty cool with how this is set now remember once you set this if you need to change something you can go back and change it so now that we have that set up i want to go to menu shooting and then go to number four and we're going to go down to camera set memory so i want to set this for my number one slot so all i have to do is click on it to confirm register now for my second memory recall slot i'm going to leave everything the same i'm going to go back into my shooting menu i'm going to go to image quality file format stays the same but i'm going to go down to movie settings then we're going to change this to 60 frames per second now i obviously want the highest bit rate the camera can offer i'm going to go up to 200 422 10-bit the only thing i need to change now is my default shutter speed now because we're at 60 we need to double that but we can't get 1 over 120 so the closest i could get is 1 over 125 so i'm gonna bump up my shutter speed to 1 over 125 uh i'm cool with pretty much everything else i'm gonna do the same thing i'm gonna go to shooting i'm gonna go to shooting mode i'm gonna go to camera set memory press right on the d-pad and i'm gonna scroll over to number two now that is my second thing registered just remember when we go 60 frames a second there is a crop so keep that in mind the last thing i want to do is set my 1080p 120 frames per second let's do the same thing let's go back into our image quality file format we need to change this to hd now the card i have does not support intro recorders so i have to go xavc shd movie settings same thing i'm going to go change this to 120 frames per second and the highest i could get right here without doing slow and quick is 100 megabits per second 4208 bit and after that i need to go ahead and bump up my shutter speed to 1 250th of a second because that's about double of 120 that's the closest we can get hit menu go back to our shooting mode go over to our shooting mode set this up for slot number three so as long as you have your camera on the video switch now you can cycle between number one number two and number three which will be your 4k 24 4k 60 hd 120 frames per second and i know this is long but i wanted to give y'all my setup there's a lot of stuff that could be changed i'm sorry for any errors i made anything like that there's a lot of information i gotta go over and i ain't perfect so if you found this video helpful please be sure to drop a comment below also share it out or whatever community and all that stuff you in and don't forget to like and subscribe so until next time enjoy your a7 foe piece of chicken grease i'm out of here terry warfield peace